Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. For free premium picks, look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Let's talk about this Danito Denier Vietka fight. Um, it's going to be controversial, right? The fight ended by going to the scorecards at the end of the fourth round because of an accidental headbutt that prevented Nino Denier from continuing with the fight. Here's what you need to know because I'm sure online is going to blow up in a few moments with people with different theories about this fight. Here's what you need to know in my opinion. You had two Hall of Fame announcers in the front row ringside at the fight. Right? When I say Hall of Fame, I'm saying they're already in the Hall of Fame. Right? One is Colonel Bob Sheridan. You may remember him. He was Don King's lead announcer for years. He did the Rumble in the Jungle. Right? The other is Larry Merchant. You might remember him. He was one of the lead announcers on HBO for years. Right now, he's doing top rank fights with Colonel Bob Sheridan. Now, both of these guys have done not dozens of fights. They've done dozens of title fights. Right? These guys have been around for decades. They know the rules. They know how to watch a referee. Neither guy, neither guy saw the referee at the end of the first round motion for an accidental headbutt. Right? Neither guy saw the referee ever indicate that the headbutt was accidental. Let me go one step further. Any ambiguity concerning whether or not a headbutt was called would be dispositive. Right? Understand that if a headbutt is not called, right, if an accidental headbutt is not deemed to have opened the cut on Anito Denier's eye, if it's caused by a punch, then the nearest corner wouldn't have the option at the end of the fourth round of ending the fight. Right? If the near couldn't continue, he would be a TKO victim. Right? If you get injured by a punch, you can't then say to the ref, hey, you know what? This guy smacked me upside the head with a good right hand. I'm not going to continue. Call the fight. Let's go to the scorecards. No, you only go to the scorecards if the referee has indicated that something accidental happened in the ring. Right? So the fact that Hall of Fame observers of the fight, guys calling the fight, guys paying attention to the fight, in the moment did not know whether or not an accidental headbutt had been called really mandates a rematch of these two fighters. Let's go one step further. You know, if you're in a fighter's corner, you're doing your job when you help that fighter get the win. Now let's look in Denier's corner. You're going to see his trainer, excellent trainer, one of boxing's very best trainers, Robert Garcia. Right, Robert Garcia, in addition to training, Nanino Denier trains Brandon Rios, trains Marcus Maidana. Right, you may recall Maidana recently gave Floyd Mayweather what many consider to be a spirited match. Right, well, Robert Garcia also trains his younger brother, Mikey Garcia. You might recall a Marky Garcia fight against a fighter named Orlando Salido, the same Orlando Salido who just beat. Lomachenko gave Lomachenko his first loss as a pro. Salido, dangerous opponent, right, has had the belt at different times. Now in that fight, Mikey Garcia drops 
Orlando Salido multiple times in the fight. So we all knew that Mikey was ahead on the scorecards. Then there's a headbutt that breaks Mikey Garcia's nose. Now this is boxing, right? This is not tennis. We know that guys have fought fights, Ali against Ken Norton, right? With broken jaws, right? Margarito against Manny Pacquiao with a broken orbital bone, right? We know that broken bones, unfortunately, are part of the sport. Having a broken nose doesn't automatically mean you get to say, hey, I'm out of here. Let's go to the scorecards. But here, there was an accidental headbutt call. So, after consulting with his younger brother, Mikey Garcia, Robert Garcia then told the ref his fighter couldn't continue. They went to the scorecards. Mikey Garcia beat Orlando Salido. Same thing happens here, right? In the fourth round of a fight in which two Hall of Fame announcers didn't know that the referee had called an accidental headbutt. Nanito Donaire with his back up against the ropes. Keep in mind, he's being pursued by Vietka. It's a competitive fight. If you track the scorecards, understand at this point, of the fight in the fourth round with Deniers back up against the ropes. Nanito Denier is up by one point on the judges' scorecards. That's how competitive the fight is. Right? As Vetka tries to rough up Denier, Denier unloads, as great fighters do, a nice hook that drops the champion. You immediately know that that fourth round is a 10-8 round, right? The champion is dropped hard. Vietka gets off the canvas. The round concludes. So, many people at ringside, I'm sure, believed at that moment in time, certainly the three judges did, that Nanino Denier was ahead on the scorecards. At that point, there's a long delay. Then we're told that Denier can't continue. And due to the accidental headbutt, the one that not even the announcers knew was called, due to the accidental headbutt, we're going to the scorecards. Right? In other words, it's not Denier can't continue, so the champ keeps his title. No, it's Denier can't continue. And because of an accidental headbutt, we're going to the scorecards. So they go to the scorecards, and here's a shock. In a four-round fight in which Denier gets the only knockdown of the fight, he's ahead on the scorecards. Right? Now, Denier gave one of the classiest post-fight interviews I have ever seen in my life. Denier himself acknowledged that there needs to be a rematch between these two fighters. Right? No question about it. But I want people to look at the film at the end of the first round a little bit more closely. Right? The question isn't whether there's a headbutt. That shouldn't be the question. It's a different question. The question is whether or not the cut that Denier had was caused by a headbutt. There's no doubt that the two guys come together. Their heads clash. But there is no film that I'm aware of that shows Denier with a cut after that clash. As the camera continues to roll, you're going to see that Vietka hits Denier with a punch. Right where the cut ends up being. Literally, right after the headbutt. Right. If it's a punch, then that changes everything. Because then you don't have justification to go to the scorecards. If a fighter is partially blinded, he's out of luck if that partial blindness was caused by a punch. Now I understand there are further arguments. If you're a Denier fan, 
You would make the argument that the near should only be vulnerable to punches during the round, not after the round. Right? The punch may have come after the round if there was a punch. The point is, there's so many questions here that these two not only have to do it again, but I believe the fight really should be ruled a no contest. Keep in mind too, if it's not only vague and ambiguous to the announcers, but if it's vague and ambiguous to the fighters as to whether or not an accidental headbutt was called, that would impact their strategies. Right? We need to find out from the corners whether they knew that an accidental headbutt had been called, and if so, when? Right? Did Vietka know that an accidental headbutt had been called when, in the fourth round, he aggressively goes after Denaire and leaves himself open to a counter hook that drops him? Right? Did both corners have the same information about whether the accidental headbutt was called? I think it's an open question. Right? So, let's just say this fight was adventuresome. But it shouldn't be enough to take anyone's title. It wasn't conclusive. Right? Keep in mind, Vietka has a punch, just like Denier has a punch. Vietka dropped champion Chris John in the middle rounds, causing John to quit on his stool. Right? There was much left to be done in this fight. In no way, shape, or form was either fighter dominating the other. Right? The resolution of the fight hinged more on a cut that may or may not have been caused by an accidental headbutt. There's a headbutt. The question is whether that's the headbutt that causes the cut. Then it did either fighter being overwhelmed in the ring as the fight was spirited, right? As both guys landed some shots, as Denier had his back up against the ropes when he lands the best punch of the fight. I think these guys necessarily need to do this again. Too much hangs in the balance for the title to change hands this way. Let me just also add, I thought Top Rank did an outstanding job. Colonel Bob Sheridan and Larry Merchant are an excellent fight team. They did a great job of keeping the viewer apprised of the controversy as it unfolded. Right? There is vagueness and ambiguity as to what's going on at the end of the first round. As you watch a replay of the fight, just ask yourself, do you know at the start of the second round whether an accidental headbutt has been called? Right? Just ask yourself that question. Let me say this too. I believe the announcer was Robin Leach, if you could believe that. I thought he was excellent. I enjoyed the accent, I enjoyed the different flavor that this Macau production gave us. I thought it was great production. I thought the guys came in and fought a spirited fight. It's just a shame. I, I thought the guys entered the ring in the right order, given who was champion. It's just a shame that the fight is now clouded in controversy, and the controversy is meaningful. Because an accidental headbutt allows a corner at the end of the fourth round to say we can't continue. If one was deemed to have happened by the referee, okay, fine. Did anyone else in the building know? Right? Let me shift gears and let me talk about the Nicholas Walters-Victor Chinian fight. 
Now the gambler should have been taken care of because the hedge. The under nine and a half rounds held. Walters got a KO. Right? It's just a shame because I was hoping for bigger profit than that. Right? I was hoping Darchinian would pull an upset because you were getting longer odds. But keep in mind, the reason you have hedges is so you can swing for the fences. And if you don't grab a hold of the pitch, then if your hedge happens, at least you get your money back. You got your money back on the Nicholas Walters, Victor Tinian fight. Let me say this too. What I like with Walters is just the crispness of the punches. Right? The flash knockdown is a nice short uppercut. The knock out that closes the show, we'll call it a knockdown, the ref doesn't even bother count, he waves off the fight, is a nice short left hook that catches Darcini in flush and causes his head to hit the bottom rope. Right? Let me just say... Walters is an explosive puncher. He is the champion. He is a talent. You need to keep your eye out for him. Let me say this about Vic Darchinian. <coughs> this is... <coughs> I'm choked up. One minute. <laughs> this is a sport <coughs> in which... Even boxing insiders, guys who are pretty good fighters, uh, esteemed trainers. We'll just talk about great trainers right now. Esteemed trainers like Nacho Baristan, who has a bad eye caused by boxing. Joel Diaz, who has a bad eye caused by boxing. <coughs> and Freddie Roach, who has lingering health um conditions caused by boxing right this is a sport where even boxing insiders have some debilitating injuries Vic Darchinian is 38 years old <coughs> even I'm injured making this video Vic Darchinian is 38 years old he's now at the stage of his career where he's getting stopped in fights the fight before the Nicholas Walters fight was against Nino Denier. He got stopped in that fight. This Nicholas Walters fight, he gets dropped so hard, the ref doesn't even count. <coughs> right? Unlike, let's say, a Bernard Hopkins, who... hasn't been knocked out for decades. Darchinian is finding himself on the canvas more than he'd like to be. Vic, I think now's the time to call it a career. Right? This is a speech where even some great fighters, when they retire, end up with slurred speech. Right? You want to stop right here before you get hit even harder and before your body has even less of an opportunity to bounce back. Let's remember, Father Time eventually is going to beat all of us. Fix had a spectacular career, but he's getting caught in fights. He's getting caught hard in fights, right? Let's remember, when he gets stopped by Walters, that's the second time he's hit the canvas in the fight, right? So, Vic, I hope you look at the calendar. You're 38 years old. I hope you look at the films, right? As good as you looked against the near, you got stopped at the end of that fight. Here, you you got dropped twice. Your last fight was a fight for the championship against the champion. I can think of fewer opportunities that a fighter has to walk away after challenging himself and fighting for the title than you have. I hope Vic Dartinian makes the wise move and leaves the ring as a boxer. You can stay in the sport, obviously, as a promoter, a trainer, etc. But the sport is simply too dangerous to linger in it when you're getting stopped in back-to-back -back fights late in your career. Let me hear from you. 
Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.